of radio history, celebrating over 30 years of the greatest songs ever made. Hi, this is Dennis DeYoung, and you're listening to Retro Rewind with Dave Harris. Retro Rewind! This is Retro Rewind. And you didn't even want to release solo albums. You, no, you no, 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 no. Forced into that. I so. only did Desert. The only reason I ever made a solo album is because Tommy, you know, he left the band. And during the Kilroy tour, and... Uh, I was completely against trying to replace him mm. in the band because I, I I believed that from you know Crystal Ball on um, that lineup uh, with he and I being the primary writers and singers was in fact the best. Core sticks. That, that that was the, that was the best. Yeah. Although Equinox is a heck of a record, Absolutely. Equinox is a better record than Crystal Ball. I would say subsequent, you know, after that, you know, we made some some pretty good albums together, and and but it was really uh, you know primarily Tommy and me, and the songwriting, and um, I I just didn't feel after he left the band in 1984, despite the fact that the other fellows in the band really wanted to, you know, keep going, and just uh, plug somebody else in Tom Tommy's. A position I, I I I thought it was uh, it was misguided to do that. I thought you know, uh, <clears throat> and so Desert I, I went and made Desert Moon because I, you know, um, quite frankly, A and M asked me if I because I, I believe Tommy was already you know um, I could be wrong. I think he was in the process of thinking about um, his his first solo album, yeah. and so A and M came to me and said, "But I'd be interested." And I thought, "Well, okay." So reluctant. that's how it happened. I was reluctant, but yeah. after I did it, I, I I can't. I won't admit. I won't say that I didn't like it. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed making Desert Moon. It was uh, it was an interesting experience not to have um, the other guys there, although I really like having the other guys there. Well, Desert Moon would have made a great stick song. Yeah, I, I think that. it would have been a. It Away went to number ten for me, so I got to figure it's got to be top five, top three for you know, yeah. for the sticks guys. Um, and Don't Wait for Heroes would have been on that album. And I think Tommy and I and Jay, we would have made you know after Kilroy, yeah. after the whole um, production and everything we did with the Kilroy, but we would have gotten back to making you know a basic. Some some sort of rock record of some nature. I don't know what it would have been, but you know, um, it would have been this album. I don't know. I don't know. You see, on this record, because as the band developed over a period of years, certain people, unspoken though it was, assumed certain. Roles yeah. and responsibilities within the group. Yeah. JY was going to provide that hard edge track, uncompromising. Tommy was going to do what Tommy did, which was a balance of the acoustic and the electric. Yeah. And I was going to, <clears throat> more or less, we provide the AC Top 40 record for the band. Uh, now, it, it wasn't always exclusive, yeah. but you know. They didn't. I don't think Sticks needed me to to write hard rock records. Not that I couldn't if I had tried, but I always thought I'm not as good at that as I am at other things. And so why, why shouldn't the people who do that more naturally do that? And that's kind of how that you know the responsibilities evolved. Now, 100 years from now, uh, I was trying to make a Sticks-like record. Okay. And. And then, then the burden for the variety then would fall upon my shoulders completely. Well, let me ask you this. So, it, was that something in the back of your mind that you... Because, listen, it's been 10 years since Brave New World. It's been 10 years since the lineup has changed. Yeah. Um, but you... Did you have something to prove? Did you want to kind of... Show, show that. What was your motivation? Well, my no, I didn't. I, I didn't feel that way at first. About I had something to prove, because I think um, you can get into a situation where you're 
doing something for the wrong reason. Yeah. And what happened was the record company, DEP, where I have a lot of success in Quebec, the French-speaking Canadians, the, other, the rest of the Canada, we do okay. But really, Ontario and Quebec, those two provinces we do the best. And um, the record company, and, and more specifically Paul Jessup, the fella up in Canada who started this whole thing with my double live album up there, got me that, that record deal. He was a fan of Equinox, Crystal Ball, Grand Illusion, Pieces of Eight, Paradise. He liked it all, but he really liked it one period, 70, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. And encouraged me to, you know, go, back to go, go to that. And I thought, no, I don't know. And then my manager, Tim Orchard, this is, that's the period he loved, you know, when he was a kid. And my wife, he's, she kept going, well, why, 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 why not? And so I said, so it's funny because the first thing I said, all right, you want one of those kind of songs? I'll write it for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd never lost the ability, no. but as an artist, as a writer, you wanted to explore other things. I made eight albums like that. Styx album, first Styx album, Three Pieces of Eight. But good Lord, am I allowed to do anything different? You know, yeah. uh, you, you get that, that thing. So, um, so I, I sat down and I wrote Pieces, uh, pieces of Eight. I sat down and I wrote 100 Years From Now. Just yeah. like that. You want one of those? Yeah. And I said, here. Yeah. And um, they kept coming, though. No, but I just wrote that, and and uh, everyone, oh yeah, I, 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 I like that. Okay, and then you know I started to think, if I were, you know, assembling a sticks album during yeah. that period, I would look for some balance, right. but it would be, it would have these kinds of songs on them. I, I don't, I don't know if you call them a progressive rock and art rock. I mean, you'll get. You'll get all the. You'll get people sitting around and arguing about this stuff late into the night about do go to Boca Raton for Christ's sake uh, about is it progressive is it hard rock who gives a shit it's either yeah. it's either good or it's not good yeah but the trappings of the song yeah. right in the style in which you produce it and arrange it can be lots of different things so yeah. you get a song like a hundred years from now right you can you can arrange it a lot of different ways so I thought what what I have done. If I was putting this on Equinox, well, what would I have done? Well, I went and did it, and then they liked it, and so I tried to write another one. I said, okay, blah, blah, blah. and that's kind of how I went in it, rather than saying to myself, "No, no, I've done that already. I've done that." Well, if, whether one that you call it, I know the people who really like progressive rock and art rock. They, you know, if they're, they're the purest, they they don't kind of view us as as as, as pure art rock and progressive rock. That's more like Gentle Giant to them, or maybe Yes, before yeah, Owner okay. of a Lonely Heart. Right. You know, yeah, really and I say to these it. people, I say to you, if you're watching, who cares? I mean, I love Roundabout, and I love All Good People, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love Owner of a Lonely Heart, because they're all good. Yeah. So if you're going to be wrapped up in this idea that the music has to be narrowly defined, like even for progressive rock, as like topographic oceans or whatever that thing was called, or I went like this, my eyes, I went, my yeah. eyes glazed over and I fell asleep. Yeah. Because, you know, it was too much. Yeah. It was too much about the trappings of... Art rock became too much about the trappings of virtuosity and playing and time signatures mm -hmm. and less about songs. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, did I get on a tirade here? No. So what I say to people like, you know, who, who if you like that kind of thing, I understand. It, it, good for you. I have no problem with that. But, you know, but for me, it's it, 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 the core of all of this has to be a really good song. And if you've got a good song, you can you can arrange it any different, uh, any any amount of different ways. And so for this album, as I digress and make this into like a sermon, um, I just said, okay, what if? Retro rewind. The '90s, the '80s, the '70s—it's all right now on Retro Rewind. <laughs>